speaker will talk about security industry distribution channel, where channel is to be defined as a mutual beneficial agreement. A way for manufacturers to reach smaller customers who might be difficult to find and serve from the factory. In this talk, speaker will cover some of the impacts on the channel structure and future directions the channel can take to increase value for industry stakeholders and end users. We announce Mr. Israel Gogol, Group Manager, Media and International Sales. Mr. Gogol manages the media group in Messe Frankfurt New Era in Taiwan. Greetings for Taiwan. You can start when you are, when you are ready. Mr. Gogol, are you with us? Yes, yes. Thank you, Amar. I was hoping I will have a chance to visit Sarajevo this year. Unfortunately, uh, we'll have to postpone it for 2021. Uh, but I'm very, I'm still very, very happy to have this opportunity to talk. Uh, I work for uh, Messe Frankfurt. We are a trade show organizer and also a B2B publication for the security industry. And our readership is targeted at the distributors and integrators and manufacturers of security equipment. So our interaction with the, the channel is ongoing and very intimate. And in today's talk, I want to talk about uh, the channel, the impacts to the channel, changes that we already see that are happening, and some future trends. So the distribution channel is a way of delivering products from the, man, from the factory, from the manufacturer, all the way to the end user, is a mutually beneficial relationship where every stage adds more value. Unfortunately, at times, it is also a very strained relationship. Uh, there are a lot of uh, misunderstandings, lack of communication, and uh, managing a successful channel partnership is a very, very big challenge. Uh, if to steal a quote from uh, Tolstoy, all the happy channels are the same. The unhappy ones are each unhappy in its own way. So in today's talk, I would like to focus on some of the difficulties that the different channel players face and where the channel is headed based on our conversations um, with manufacturers, with distributors and integrators. The biggest impact this year on the security channel is the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the impact is not just on our channel, is across the globe and in every industry in every country. Uh, in, a, in a previous presentation I, uh, I did uh, for ANS Adria, we use the metaphor of a war without guns. The borders are closed, people sit at home, and every day the news start with a number of sick and dead people. Uh, we recently did a survey of our readership. How has COVID-19 uh, impacted them? And we see that responses are divided into three major groups. We have the companies that suffered a drastic decline in their sales, a very sharp decline in demand, and they're now simply trying to survive a crisis that no one ever expected or anticipated. We have a group of companies that try to manage with what they have. They try to manage the irregular demand a few weeks, everything is normal. Then there is lockdown, then opening up again, then a second wave, third wave. They don't know how to manage, but they're trying to manage as best as they can with a, a, a slowdown in the economic environment. And there is a small group of people. For them, it's a great year. They have a explosive uh, increase in the demand for their products. And of course, uh, they feel bad about the loss of life and, and the tragedy of the pandemic, but from product point of view, their products answer the demand in the market. So we recently did a survey to try to quantify how many people are in each group. And we see that there is a negative, a substantial negative impact on the security industry. 77% of the channel players that we reached out to report that there's a decrease in their business performance and two thirds, almost two thirds, 63% admit that they have to reduce expenses or uh, staff uh, because of the pandemic. So this impact of, of COVID-19, of the coronavirus, 
comes on top of a few very difficult years for the channel structure in the security industry. If we take the macro uh, changes that happen to the channel, the declining prices, the commoditization of uh, equipment, uh, in parallel, there is an increase in the channel costs. So the prices of the, the products are dropping, but you as a channel player need to invest more in in your uh, in your capabilities in your costs um, the margins are shrinking uh, every year now with covid 19 things are not getting better so this brings the question how will the distribution channel change what will happen as we move on uh, into into 2021 and into the future so of course in this environment everybody is looking for ways to cut down costs and become more efficient. And one of the things that companies are considering is their channel structure and how they work. And many companies are considering what is called disintermediation, removing the unnecessary links in the distribution chain between themselves and the clients by thinking that uh, this is a good way for them to increase their efficiency increase their margins and their profitability. Now, the question is asked, is it really cost cutting or are we actually cutting the branch that we sit on as channel players? What is the best way for us to deliver value to the end users and to the clients? Now, from each point of view of the channel, each one is unhappy in their own way. If we look at distributors and we ask distributors how they feel and what are the challenges that they face, we can see that distributors often feel that they are squeezed on all sides. On the one hand side, there is price pressure from clients. Every year, clients expect the prices of the equipment to drop. In addition, because of e-commerce, because of online platform like Amazon and Alibaba, it, clients today have much more pricing information and uh, leverage to influence distributors. If you are trying to sell something for $130 and the client comes to you and says, yes, but I saw it on Alibaba for 70, why are you being so greedy? You are in a difficult situation. So you can either try to explain to the client that you have to pay for shipment and for fulfillment costs and for storage and in the end you also want to make a little bit of money uh, but uh, it is difficult to do it without losing a client the pressure comes also from the manufacturer's side manufacturers are also under a pressure to continue reducing prices so with it comes also a reduction of the margins that the distributors can uh, can collect so all these things make it more difficult for uh, the distributor to maintain a, a good value proposition. A third problem is over distribution. So today, because of e-commerce and because of uh, strategies of, of manufacturers, um, the channel is much more fluid than it was before. So. Uh, buyers that want to buy equipment have a lot more opportunities of reaching out to different distributors shop for price and choose what is uh, what is best for them by this squeezing the margins of the distributors even lower the integrators perspective is a little bit different integrators are the next step after the distributors and they feel that they are being skipped over the number one problem that the integrators talk about is manufacturers that are targeting end users directly so this is understandable in in some in some types of projects or in some verticals where the project is very very complicated or requires special uh, special expertise the involvement of the manufacturer with uh, the end user can be uh, understood but uh, this skipping over the integrator and going direct to the end user also hurts the integrator and their ability to profit 
Today, with the internet, with online marketing, manufacturers have the ability to reach out to end users and to influence them at scale, something that uh, before was much more difficult. So if before the manufacturers had to rely on the channel to bring them leads, today they can do it themselves. Once they start doing it, it puts uh, the installer in the integrator and the professional installer in a in a difficult position where their, ad, where their added value is diminished. A cloud is, is, another, is, a, is another market changer for integrators because cloud solutions, and it doesn't matter if it's video surveillance as a service, access control as a service, visitor management, cloud solutions by definition are direct to end user and the recurring monthly revenue goes straight to the manufacturer. So this further diminishes the integrator's value proposition by making them into an installer only. So the added value in design of the system, in the integration of the different systems to work together is also being eroded and diminished over time. So in this environment of uh, shrinking margins of uh, uh, different challenges that different uh, links in the distribution uh, value chain face, what will be the changes to business models? What will be the changes to how we do business? And I would like to discuss a little bit um, what are the things that buyers value the most. So consulting firm McKinsey uh, did a survey of the electronic industry distribution channel uh, two years ago, and they asked buyers what are the things that they are interested that they value the most about their relationship with their distributor. And it is interesting to see that the first ones are product availability and product range, uh, the customer service, the relationship that you have with the sales representative, the delivery speed, how fast do you get the products after you ordered them and price came in at sixth place so this is the good news meaning that buyers not uh, don't always prioritize price in their interaction although that is the the point that is most easy to to discuss but that the key for the, the distribution channel to continue and deliver value to the end users is to offer a wide range, but targeted a product range, meaning that uh, buyers today don't want to necessarily don't want to go to Alibaba where you can buy everything from uh, deodorants to security cameras. They prefer to deal with the professional security distributors and integrators that offer them a wide range of security products, but focusing on our industry, on what we do on commercial security. If we want to look at a, another source of, uh, of, I wouldn't call it inspiration, but try to another industry that can give us clues as to how our own distribution channel is going to change, I would like to point everybody to the travel industry as a case study. So travel agencies and bookstores are some of the industry channels that the internet has uh, killed or, or changed. So not too many years ago, people relied on travel agents for all their uh, international travel. You would go there to pick up your plane tickets. You would go there to choose hotels. You would go there to choose uh, different uh, package tours. Very similar to a very fixed channel structure where you go and the distributor has a limited set of SKUs, a limited set of products that you can choose from. Then comes the internet and people start thinking, why do I need to go to a travel agency just to print my tickets? Why don't I talk directly to the supplier, to the airline company, and buy my own ticket. And the, as a result, uh, websites like booking.com, like uh, Kayak, uh, changed 
the travel industry in a very similar way to the challenges that the security industry is facing today. So when there is more price transparency and more ability to order things directly from the factory, there is less and less need for the intermediary, for the distributor or the integrator in between. But we also see that the travel industry is changing. And if you are familiar with uh, companies like Get Your Guide, KK Day, or Kluk, these are new online marketplaces for traveling. And these are websites where when you plan a trip overseas, you can use them to get a lot of different services in your destination. It can be a local SIM card, it can be a ticket for a show in a theater, it can be a, a market, it can be a market tour where you buy fresh produce and learn how to cook it in a local kitchen. These service providers now aggregate, now offer you access to a lot of niche tour operators and niche providers that you could not reach before when it was a very rigid and strict a distribution channel of traveling. And when we start looking at the security industry and we think is such a thing possible also here we see that this concept of marketplace is already gaining footsteps into the security industry so if you ask me how will the channel change in the coming years i see two major changes one is a switch from a channel structure where you can only buy a set a set number or a fixed number of products from each distributor or integrator into more of a marketplace where you can choose different, uh, different solutions according to your needs and also the changing role of the channel player. So if channel players today, for example, distributors are looked at as order takers and box movers, uh, in the coming year, the ones that want to stay successful and stay in business will need to switch from a box mover to matchmaker to find the right solution for the client and maybe source new and interesting product that the client is not aware of and bring them to the market. And if we look at the current landscape of the security industry, we can see that this already started. Okay, so for example, Access Communications have their own app store, Milestone launched their marketplace where they introduce different solutions, different integration partners. Safety and security things from Bosch is creating their own platform for apps that can run on IP cameras. Uh, Intel has a solution marketplace in which they promote their OpenVINO toolkit for uh, AI for video surveillance. And all these are examples for online platforms where you can come and see uh, what integrations are possible. However, this is still at a very early stage. So the current marketplaces are still very, very small and they're driven mainly by the manufacturers. And if we look at them at a critical view, from a critical point of view, they are not real they are not 100% real marketplaces because they lack the ability of actually buying something and they lack the ability of uh, configuration, of pricing and, and finishing the sale. So at this point of time, they are mostly, uh, inform mostly informational. The, they provide limited market, uh, real marketplace capabilities. And the question is, if looking forward, do we see potential for any other forms of marketplaces? For example, regional marketplaces led by a distributor or an integrator in a certain area. Today, if you go to a manufacturer a marketplace, you can see many uh, interesting options for solutions, but they might not be relevant for you. If I have a... a public transportation project in Sarajevo, and I see that there is a suitable integration coming from a, a developer in Tokyo, it might not be very, very practical to do it. So the uh, new concept of a marketplace might benefit from being led regionally by a key integrator or a key distributor. It is also left to see whether or not there will be enough 
supply and demand of these unique solutions and unique integrations that will justify the creation of a separate marketplace or a, will security buyers be happy with uh, getting a fixed number of solutions from the top five uh, from the top five uh, manufacturers that will cover most of the market and the niche solutions will still be there but only for extreme cases where uh, there is a requirement for special expertise or special capabilities so before uh, we say goodbye i want to remind everybody that trade events are the original marketplaces coming from a trade fair organizer the uh, events like the adria security summit or any trade show which i hope we will open up uh, next year again are the place that allows you to find new and interesting products to bring to the market to find new ways of delivering value to your buyers, to the end users, and discuss future collaboration with other manufacturers, with other integrators, with other, uh, with other channel players. Uh, I hope you enjoy the summit. I wish everybody successful meetings, and I look forward to meeting in, per in person next year. In the meantime, if you want to stay in touch, uh, here is my email address. I'll be happy to answer any questions or continue this discussion uh, online later on. And you can also register to asmex.com weekly newsletter. We send it out every Thursday to 24,000 subscribers, all of them channel players in the security industry. It's a roundup of our weekly news and viewpoints about what's going on. I enjoyed my talk with you today. Thank you so much and all the best. Israel. Do we have connection, Israel? Yes, I'm Great. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. I believe that uh, our audience enjoyed it as much as we did here in the studio. Uh, we have just thank one you. question for you to explain, if you may. Uh, you mentioned the research that you conveyed with 77% of head that you had a drop of income. How many people have you interviewed for this particular survey? Uh, we sent it out to our uh, to our total list. We had over 300 respondents, uh, I believe. So they were globally responded. Our readership is mostly from uh, Asia side, but it is global in nature. So about half of our readers are based in APAC. Uh, then another 35% are in EMEA and about 15% are in uh, uh, America, mostly North America. And these numbers are more or less uh, similar to what uh, Mr. Boris Popovich showed uh, yesterday. So in, the, in his presentation, he also showed a very, very similar, a different survey, not ours, but I was happy to see that the numbers are more or less the same, give or take uh, two or three percent. So it's it's really valid sample on your side, as we can see and witness right now. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, we <laughs> we believe so. We got a good number. We got a good number of respondents, and we asked a very uh, focused target audience. So the readership is all from the security industry. It's not a it's not a survey done in the street. So uh, the sentiment that we got from from the survey and also from you know my my individual talks with uh, with companies is along those lines thank you israel today with us was mr israel google a friend of Azure security summit security summit 2020 virtual event and we sincerely hope that he will be able to join us live next year in 2021 thank you very much once again sure. for this presentation thank and you amar thank you.